Last week, wonderful Stanley and I drove to Bakersfield, California to attend the California Mathematics Council in Central California. And it's something we were really excited to attend. Peter Lil Hadal was one of the presenters. And you know that I'm a big believer in post-it notes. I do it in the beginning of the year, in the middle of the year, and at the end of the year. And I ask my students to tell me where their heart is in mathematics on these post-its. And these post-its have become nothing less than treasures to me because it shows me where they are and then it shows me how they're growing. I only wish I could find a way to put it in my grade book because to me that's the greatest assessment of all is where is their heart in mathematics. So you can imagine my thrill while sitting in Peter's session with hundreds of people and he says something that I really like to do is have the students draw on a piece of paper what they think math is. I never thought to do that. I just give them three by three post-it to write a few words and or, or draw a small symbol or picture. But he gives them a full eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And he was able to show these to us. These were for his secondary students. And those secondary students filled the page. And some of them had really scary uh, representations. Some of them had joyful representations. And I could not wait to get back to my classroom to do that. And so that's what I did on Monday. I said, you can use pictures, you can use words, um, anything, any way that you can show on the paper what mathematics is to you. And I didn't say anything like, now remember the things I've taught you. Remember growth mindset. I, I just let them go. And I'm sure, like me, you have students when you give it a creative kind of an assignment to, well, I don't know what to do. There was none of that. They knew what to do. I wish I could share them all with you. And wonderful Stanley is trying to figure out a way that you can see some of the images because I made the mistake of showing, of, of letting them write in pencil. If I do this, excuse me, when I do this again, it will be with Sharpies so that you can see. But I need to read some of these for you. Um, Olivia made a cartoon, and um, I'm just going to give you a, a piece of what they said. You know, their pages are completely full. She writes, mistakes are good. And how, why do I love so much that she misspelled mistakes? You know, that just, <laughs> mistakes are good. She wrote a little cartoon with stick figures, and, and one figure is saying, what is 7 times 5? Um, and the other figure says 75. And the first figure says, no, try again. And the other figure says 35. And then there's a big yes at the end. You get smart from mistakes. Try this next time. Okay. Bryce um, loves to draw. He would spend all his day crocheting and drawing if I let him. And he drew all kinds of advanced symbols, infinity and 3D cubes. But he also drew, oh my goodness, and it's a whiteboard. I just realized that. And there's a teacher or student holding a dry erase marker with the eraser. I just noticed that for the first time. And he wrote 22 divided by 7 equals pi. Now, we have not spent all year on pi. I just started teaching pi uh, this last week, but that stuck with him, and he drew a circle. He wrote um, a bunch of other math things, but he also wrote a sad face crying with the words over it, sometimes. Sometimes my students get frustrated when we start a new unit because they're, they're feeling really confident, you know, they're mastering a unit, and then we start over with a completely new unit and they're right back down in the beginning. So a few weeks ago, I had them draw um, a hilly kind of a line on their whiteboards, and I said, do you have any idea what this is? And they said, you know, curves. And I said, to me, this is, this is knowing nothing about a topic, learning, 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 getting to the top of mastery, and then right back down to the bottom of learning something new. And I said, this is called learning, and this is good. And I said, would we want to always be at the top? You know, what, what opportunity would that there be for new knowledge? I don't know if that played into Elin's work, but she drew uh, the letter, the words math, and turned it into an up and down kind of a thing. 
And these are some of the images that she drew all around the ups and downs of math, trying life, nature, places, numbers, having fun, thinking, failing, and she drew an F by it, trying again. You will learn someday, never giving up, listening, hard things, math, 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 all over it. Aaron wrote a little paragraph. Math makes you smarter. It's fun. It helps you with a lot of stuff. You need math for lots of things like counting stuff. Math is easier than you think. You learn things at different times, but it's okay. You can learn math different ways. And she wrote fun. Now, she remember, I remember, oh, that was my crochet hook. That scared me to death. It's on my lap. I remember at the beginning of the year, she, she was not a fan. And she wrote a stick figure that says, um, isn't learning fun? Yes, I feel smart. This is fun. I'll end with this one. It's Fia. She wrote a lot of different cartoons um, with lots of people saying things. Math can be hard, but everyone is a mathematician. A person like this, I don't know, can become a person like this. And the person has in their thought bubble some math. If you think you're a failure in math, you're a failure for thinking that. And then in parentheses, you're not a failure. Math is when you feel like you will never understand it. Oh, Fia, you're talking to my heart. You just have to let your, imagine, let your imagination make you think you're creative because you are with a heart. Creativity equals a math person. Math is not to be scared of. It's to put your head up high and just try your best. So this week, put your head up high and just try your best. Like and subscribe!